Uh, well, let me at a high level see if you can pull this off. If I ask you, uh, what's the book you write about? It's about uh, a group of people who are united solely by their opposition to progressivism, who have little else in common, but who are all frequently caricatured and dismissed um, by the larger establishment media. But you give this kind of story of how it came to be. Sure. And to me, like we're talking about trolls, but the internet side of things is quite interesting. So first of all, how does alt-right connect so the alt-right right. is the subset of the new right, which feels that race, not racism, is the most or one of the most important socio-political issues. Are any of those folks like part of the mainstream or worth paying attention to? Not part of the mainstream. The alt-right? Yeah. By definition, they would be part of the mainstream. They would not be they, part of them. No, they would not. I don't know that any of them... Well, worth is not a position. I'm not in a position to say worth. I'm, I would say that it is of use to be familiar with their arguments because to dismiss any school of thought, especially one that has historically gained leverage, especially one that has historically gained leverage in very dark ways, especially in, in America, in Europe, and other places, just to say, oh, they're racist. I don't need to think about them. It, it's, it's, it doesn't behoove you. So what... Uh... What lessons do we draw from the, the 4chan side of things, like the internet side of the movement? Tits or get the fuck out. Um, can you define every single word in Tits that? Tits are breasts uh -huh. or get the fuck out. That's from 4chan. Okay, that's what, what's, uh, what's it mean? Oh, sometimes like a woman will appear in 4chan and they'll just reply tits or get the fuck out. I'm trying to understand what the, oh, oh, that's the way. <laughs> I just um uh, very slow. Oh, uh, so that's okay. So that's very disrespectful towards female <laughs> members of the community. I don't understand. Yes, so th there's rules to this community, and one of them is uh, we're not very good with women. Is that that's one of the rules? It's more of a principle than a rule. <laughs> it's, it's a principle. It's a principle. We're not going to ever get laid. <laughs> That's fundamental principle. Is there but other we are going to get picks. <laughs> picks. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes on the internet. Sometimes they GTFO. GT okay, so is there other actual principles of, so like it's, it's uh, from my maybe naive perspective is they have like the darkest aspects of trolling, which is like take nothing serious, make a game out of everything. That, that's not 4chan per se. One of the things that you will learn in 4chan, which I think is very healthy, is if you have an idiosyncratic or unique worldview or focus on an aspect of history or culture, you'll be able to find like-minded people who you will engage with you and discuss it without being pre uh, pre uh, preemptively dismissive. That's an ideal that they- Well, it's not an ideal, it's something that happens a lot. Now, 4chan's not really like Paul is their board with politics, um, but they will you know, get into some like, the people there are much more erudite than you think. So they do take, my, my perception was they take nothing seriously. So there's things that they take seriously, like discussing ideas. I'll give you one example. There was a video someone posted of a girl who put kittens in a bag and threw it in a river. And they found out where she was within a day and got her like arrested. So yeah, they do take some things very seriously. Okay, but that's like an extreme that, I mean, that's good. First of all, that's heartwarming yeah. that they wouldn't somehow turn that into a thing. That feels like more of, uh, what is it? What's the other one, 8chan? Well, 8chan's twice as good as 4chan, yeah. That's their slogan. <laughs> but it feels like they're the kind of community that would take that kitten uh, situation and make a mockery. Yeah, they're so. they're darker than 4chan, yeah. yeah. And don't even, I'm not allowed to talk about 16chan. <laughs> I'm already overwhelmed clearly uh, by 4chan lingo. I'm, I have actually, I literally wrote down in my notes, um, like in doing research for this conversation, I learned the word pleb. And I wanted to ask you what this pleb means. You know what pleb means? No. I don't, what do you? I, I, I saw, I mean, actually, no, I don't. I you don't know, know what a pleb is? I just, I don't know what a pleb is. Like a plebiscite. Or plebeian. Okay. But does it mean something more sophisticated? Um, 
No, it's a very unsophisticated mechanism of being dismissive. Of like the regular people. Yeah, or someone who comes at me on Twitter. Okay. All right, so back back to the 4chan alt right. It wasn't the uh, Those are very different concepts. Don't don't conflate them. But which internet culture was the alt right born out of? Uh it's, well, alt right was more born of blogs and blogs. people had different blogs where they were posting what they called like racial realism, scientific which is scientific racism so called, um and you know breaking down issues from a racialist perspective. So that wasn't 4chan is much more uh dynamic. It's a message board, it's a very fluid. Um, so it doesn't lend itself to these kind of in-depth analysis of ideas or history. But it spreads them. Like it- the, It spreads it them as memes, yeah. And it, uh -huh. you know, but- But it's not, a, it's not an essential mechanism of, uh, of the alt-right historically? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. So it's, it's both, mostly about blogs. Okay, so what, uh, what do you make of the psychology of this kind of worldview? When you have, and this goes to your conspiracy theory, subject earlier. When you have a little bit of knowledge about something, about history that no one's talking about, and there's only one group that is talking about it, and they and you have no alternative answers, you're going to be drawn to that group. So because issues about race, anti-Semitism, homophobia are so taboo in our culture, understandably, there's good reasons. If you start putting things like, how old should you be if you have sex with kids and just have regular conversations, eventually some people are gonna start taking some positions you don't like. So some things have to be sanctified to some extent. They're the only ones talking about it. You're gonna be drawn to that uh, uh, subculture. And where does the alt-right stand now? I mean, I hear that term used. used so the term has been weaponized by the corporate press for people that they want to read out of society. So it's used both on individual levels, like people like Gavin McGingis, Milo Yiannopoulos, some others. They, I mean, I think they've referred to Trump as alt right, um, and and you know it's become a slur, just like incel or bot, that has become largely removed from its original meaning. Do you have a sense that there's still a movement that's alt right or like? Yeah, they call themselves now. So okay, so there's something called the dissident right. And they say, we're completely not like the alt-right because the alt-right's A, B, and C, and we're B, C, D. There's a huge overlap. It's very much the same people. Um, Is there intellectuals that still represent some, uh, some aspect of the movement? It, it, I mean, sure. Are you tracking this? Not not that much anymore. Um, I think they've, they're, I don't find it particularly as, um, now that the book's done, you know, my I'm looking more into history for my next book. Um, and you mentioned communism. I'm going to talk a lot about the Cold War. Um, so this kind of stuff has largely uh, fallen away from my radar to some extent. And they've also been the the. It's been a very effective movement to get them marginalized and silenced. So they're not as as, as deep as a, of a concern in terms of concern or not. Just their they're, impact they're not, on society. Yes, it's much so. lessened. Yeah. Uh, 